Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. My name is Paul Anthony. And I'm CP. And today we're reviewing the top five fragrances for summer 2018. So Charles Philippe, I know uh, you're a fragrance buff and I am a budding fragrance buff and you've put together a top five list for us of the top summer fragrances of 2018. Uh, so can you please take it away? Well, firstly, I'd like to point out that these fragrances weren't chosen at random and they weren't chosen because they are personal favorites, but they were taken through the Bespoke Unit Fragrance Formula, a quantifiable uh, review matrix that Paul and I have been working on for the last five years that will give each of these a score corresponding to their composition, usage, weight and strength, and seasonality. So trust us that these are the best for summer 2018. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch over, now let's get to it. Paul, I think you should talk about number one because it's yeah. something from your collection and you introduced me to this fragrance. Yeah, so this is uh, my second bottle of Crude Event. As those of you out there who are already in the fragrance community, you'll be very aware of it. It's an absolute monster, released in 2010. Uh, those of you who are maybe not so into fragrances, this may be new to you as it's more of a boutique higher end fragrance. Mm -hmm. uh, it does come in at probably over $400. Uh, you can find online a little bit cheaper. We'll put some links below to some places that may be achievable. Um, it's a very rich fragrance, a very encapsulating fragrance. It, it projects well. I mean, what you're really gonna get out of this, which makes it a summer fragrance, is that top tropical note which is pineapple. Mm. So you're gonna get the pineapple and that's what's really gonna hit you. And it's in the it's in the head, but it's just gonna carry on. It doesn't really burn off, mm. which I think is why people love it. You've still got that pineapple, mm. you know, tropical feel throughout it. We did include it in our, you know, top of spring, but we put it down the order. This is at the top for a reason. Um, it hasn't yet suffered from its own success, I don't think. Maybe within the fragrance community. Only within the fragrance community. Yeah, but I think uh, the populace at large, this is still an unknown fragrance, still very recognizable. I don't think you're being obnoxious by buying a $400 bottle of fragrance. Uh, if you're into fragrances and you love the smell, go ahead, buy this thing. You only need one or two sprays. It's mm. very, very strong. Um, age range, um, I know we didn't want to touch on yeah. too many age ranges. I want ranges. to avoid this, but it is a it's, very wide demographic that yeah. you want can wear this. Yeah, time of day, I mean, I've worn it to the office. I've overdone it at the office, um, mm. and it smells like you're a pineapple cart rolling through. So again, <laughs> be careful, but I think it's also great at night. I think probably these two are probably the best nighttime fragrances we've got here on a date because it is, this one is especially so rich. Mm. Well, it gets mm. you, it's great. Absolutely. It also features notes of uh, birch tree, which uh, adds a slight smokiness in the base, which makes it also good for nighttime wear. And because it's this boutique fragrance that you mentioned, that these have batch numbers, they're not rolled out in uh, a factory. In fact, it's on in a small uh, laboratory, which is just south of Paris. These uh, well, that was originally a British one, so but they moved to France because of the French <laughs> perfumes. There we go. Charles <laughs> thinks he's French, so <laughs> anyway. We'll Bonjour, mon ami. <laughs> petit pois, petit pois. Watch two, watch two. So English reference, if any of you are out there. So anyway, back to business. Back, back to business. So because this is a boutique fragrance, because it does have uh, batches, there are fluctuations. For example, this one features a hint of cucumber in the heart, which adds to the summery effectiveness. It's a little more smoky than the first batch I got, the mm. other one being extremely strong on the pineapple front. However, still got a lot of pineapple there, still very enjoyable. Mm. Moving on, because it's gonna to be too long this video, so we're mm. gonna to go to Numero Dos. Yes, uh, Aqua de Gio of Giorgio Armani. So, this is another one from your collection, something that yep. I tried before. In fact, it's a long-standing classic that has been a firm favorite. I think during uh, during the early noughties and late 90s, <laughs> at its peak, it was becoming a victim of its own success and it being worn too much, but now it's making a comeback and it's becoming popular again because it has sort of gone under the radar for so long and been rediscovered as a classic and versatile summer fragrance. I mean, for being a designer fragrance, um, it's held its price point extremely well. It's not mm -hmm. one of these 
fragrances like we uh, reviewed Dunhill Icon of mm. the all four bottles and you've gone from a hundred dollar plus price point per bottle down to the 30 40 range is where this thing is really difficult to pick up at any significant discount which kind of attests to um, you know I think it's popularity still it's mm. a great performing fragrance uh, they, this is obviously a fairly large bottle what we got here we've got uh, 200 mil um, but it comes in some giant sizes as well mm. but uh you know it's one I think that uh, you know it's very approachable I think it's a great daytime fragrance mm. great office fragrance it's not gonna offend anyone uh, people was uh, Charles said that are maybe um, a little bit older like uh, may remember it from mm. from back then when it was a lot more popular but you know I think it's it's definitely a, a, a strong one for the Arsenal even though it's a uh, you know, maybe he had its heyday, but that's maybe where the opportunity lies in this one. Yeah, it's, it's seeing a renaissance, and it, in, it is a classic summer fragrance in that it features the two key notes, which are cologne, which is the sea breeze fragrance, which is a synthetic aldehyde, which has this fresh air smell, a bit like um, just after a thunderstorm, this kind of ozonic smell that you get, as well as ambergris, which is in the base, which is a synthetic uh, compound nowadays called ambroxan, which replicates the smell of uh, quite a musky, it's, originally it was actually um, sort of whale vomit, sperm whale vomit. <laughs> but when you open this up, you find it on the beach, you open it up and it has this distinctive animal-y sea breeze notes and reminiscent of pipe tobacco as well. So this does have all the characteristic hallmarks of a summer fragrance. Indeed. A little bit of a uh, designer curveball for you here, Charles, mm. with the uh, CK2. I kind of picked this up last year. I was actually out at an outlet with uh, my girlfriend shopping and just picked this up uh, impulse purchase in uh, as it was at the register mm. um, and have enjoyed it ever since. I mean, I got it at the end of last summer. I've probably only used, you know, a quarter of the bottle so far, but you know as we're uh, approaching summer 2018 here as we uh, film this video i'm definitely uh, looking forward to putting this back in the rotation for a daytime summer fragrance as you, uh, in terms of usage it's very versatile being a versatile uh, being a unisex fragrance i mean you share this with your girlfriend it's going to be shared oh, yeah. by couples it's... yeah for sure again it's mm. not um, hitting you in the face mm. like this one um, it hasn't got like a woody base or anything mm. overly masculine here. It's very approachable, mm. very fresh, very light. Um, yeah, just a, just one of those great summer fragrances and responds very well to being in the heat as well, mm. which this one does especially. Like we haven't really touched it in this video, but certain fragrances perform better when your skin temperature is different. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah. this one is 100% true of that. And uh, I believe so is this one as well. And this one, it features kind of this mineral limestone chalky note. Uh, the people are calling pebbles, which I think is an odd one. But I would liken it more to, uh, say, a stone patio just after a bit of rain or that's been wet by a hose. You get this kind of, kind of mineral note. So it's very similar to that alongside some violet, which is very, uh, very tangible and very striking. But makes it overall not a deep fragrance. It's not musky at all. It's very light, very refreshing, can be worn just about anyone. Yeah. So we're going to dip our toes back towards the kind of uh, more boutique-y fragr mm. fragrances with Aqua de Palm here, Cedro. Uh, obviously, that is a cedar base, and it's basically a citrus head. So mm. this is a sophisticated fragrance oh, that yeah. I think actually works daytime, spring, fall, because mm. of the, uh, especially spring with mm. the citrus mm. notes. But in the summer, I think it's an absolute rock solid performer, especially in the evening because of that. Oh, yeah. You know, and you came up with uh, an actual reference that so it kind of jogged your memory. Oh yeah, um, well fragrances are very good at uh, bringing out olfactive memories, smells that we smelled during our childhood or early in our lives that actually have a, a tangible and strong bond with a specific memory. For me, this smells remarkably like a childhood memory that I had on the French Riviera and for me it represents the smell of nighttime French Riviera because of these uh, citrus and cedar notes with some aromatics such as basil it was quite striking and uh, as the French call it it's a Madeleine de Proust and that it just sends you there and it's very very vivid. Sure and the reason why I actually sought this bottle out after several years of getting into fragrances. One of my first boutique fragrances oh. was uh, Penalegan's uh, Opus, mm. which is oh, basically, yes. uh, you smell like a cedar splinter, but it smells phenomenal in the winter. And I was looking for kind of a counterpart for the warmer summer months. So when I found that cedar base mm. with the citrus head, that's perfect. Yeah. Mediterranean vibe on it, great, can't beat it. So 
Last but not least. Last but not least, an all-time classic from the early 90s, Davidoff Cool Water. This is, I would say, the young upstart to Aqua de Gio. Uh, although it came first, Aqua de Gio is a much more refined, albeit more expensive fragrance. Davidoff Cool Water is kind of the cheeky chappy, very, very overt cologne notes. So this is, as I was saying earlier, the synthetic aldehydes that rem are reminiscent of sea breeze. And although it contains other aromatics, there isn't much else going on. It is no. just cologne, 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 with a little bit of ambergris in the uh, in the base. So if you're trying to marry them up, you're going to be marrying them up with these two, yeah. Oh, so yeah. that's, you know, maybe mm. if you're more budget conscious, you can try this. That's what really brings this one out, is that it is the, by far, uh, one of the cheapest on this list. Uh, how CK2, where does that come from? Uh, I'd have to say, I can't exactly recall, but I think it's going to be in the 40 to $50 range. Okay, so Cool Water is much cheaper. You can find that probably for around 20 bucks. A 75 uh, mil like this, or 1.6 ounces, can be find that for 12 to 15 dollars so it is a great budget fragrance ideal for a very young gentleman from his teens to his early 20s so if you're a kid going to high school all the way up to a college student this is a great companion during those hot months Sure, well that is the roundup of our summer top five fragrances of 2018. I'm sure you guys in the fragrance community and community at large are gonna have some very different views from mm. ours. However, this is our matrix-fied uh, top five list. We're always open to new suggestions. Absolutely. So if you uh, put those in the comments below, always looking for them. Um, as always, please like these videos. If you do so, there'll be additional links below on where to buy all of these fragrances there also be more links on uh, checking out the seasons to come with our best autumn and winter fragrances as well as links into uh, bespokeunit.com and other areas of interest of what we cover so with that mouthful being said uh lastly you take it away cp smash that subscribe right, button <laughs> i'm paul anthony i'm cp and see you later take care